Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome to the Nightmare Cabin. Hold on, let me straighten this up. Here we go. Uh, I've got an album review for you. So, you saw it the other day. I had Chris from Skeletal Remains on the channel, and we had a good chat, and we went through the band's back catalogue. And uh, now I'm finally getting round to reviewing the album. So, here it is. Fragments of the Ageless. This is called Digipack Edition. And uh, yeah, as I said in that interview, I've been following Skeletal Remains uh, pretty much since the third album came out, and I think that was yeah, that was a breakthrough for uh, for most people really, Devouring Mortality. And um, I've just seen there's just been something special about this band um, ever since I you know came across that album, and uh, they there's just something about them where. You can do classic old school death metal or thrash metal or any kind of metal without it being slipping into parody or slipping into this is just regurgitation. You can take the classic recipe and the classic formula and do something good with it and just carry on the, li the lineage, really. And uh, this album basically just whatever your your you know your 10 top 10 favorite death metal albums whatever they may be, be it bolt thrower morbid angel napalm death death cannibal corpse nile intombed deicide whatever it is you got that plethora of classic death metal albums be it from you know yeah i guess you could probably lean more towards the american side of things but um wouldn't it just be good just to hear a, a new band just put out an album that just sits with them, just just aims at that and isn't trying to reinvent the wheel, but just just contributes to that to that classic canon, really. And um, that's what Skeletal Remains have been doing. I mean, at the beginning, the first couple of albums are sort of like a that like that nice little bit between thrash metal and death metal. Where they're not quite one or the other, so think, think Demolition Hammer, think Solstice, so on and so forth. But it was around um, a bit like the way Sepultura did, you, you know, in around Schizophrenia, Beneath the Remains, and um, Arise. It was sort of it kind of blurred the lines a little bit, and it was just like, who cares? This is just really good, you know. When it when when music is this good, who cares about the subgenre, you know? And um, he kind of got that they kind of reached that nice little sweet spot that nice little balance on devouring mortality but then on the entombment of um the entombment of chaos that's when they sort of switched to full on death metal and it, it, it in a dark atmospheric way um and yeah the uh in the sort of esoteric sort of dark uh subject matter as well so you know we go we go full on morbid angel shall we say without ripping morbid angel off there's been plenty of bands where it is just like yeah i might as well just put a morbid angel album on you don't get that with skeletal remains but what you do they don't yeah they don't they don't steal from anyone they steal from everyone it's this is just a brilliant mix of a hodgepodge of all the best death metal bands but just done with passion with love and just putting together just a really good recipe really i always use the food analogy sometimes you know you don't sometimes you go to a certain restaurant whatever your favorite restaurant may be that style be it you know italian restaurant or you know just classic food sometimes you just want it done right your favorite dish you just want it done right be it a burger restaurant you just you don't need a, a new style or a new pizzazz or a new presentation sometimes you just want it done classic and done right and um, you know, if you go to Italy, just a just a bowl of you know, just a plain tomato pasta done in a small restaurant run by a family is the best pasta, better than some high street. You know, you know I'm going with this fuck's sake. Anyway, right, so um, <laughs> let's get into the songs. So relentless episode. So basically, this album is. Um, it's a game of two halves, really, and I'm quite curious to look at the track listing 
on the vinyl because I only got this as a CD. I did get the last album, um, Two Minutes of Chaos, on vinyl because it came with a CD. So I thought, oh well, for the for the price difference, I might as well just buy the vinyl, get the artwork. And uh, no, right. To me, at least, this is an album of two halves. So you've got the first five songs that are, you know, everything you want. Good, solid, death metal. Pummeling, whoever the drummer is on this as well. Let's go through the lineup quickly. So we've got Mike DeLaO, Brian Rush, Chris Monroy, obviously vocals on guitar, and then Pierce Williams on drums. How long has Pierce Williams been in the band? Is this his first? Because this guy is a monster behind the kit. Right, so this is his first album with the band, and yeah, trust me, you you notice you notice the difference. I mean, not not that any of the band's previous, uh, yeah, none of the band's previous drummers have been slouches by any way, shape, or form. So we've got a new bass player, a new drummer, and a guitarist that had left and then come back. Let's see what Mike has. Uh, So he was in the band originally in 2011, but then he also oh, played on a demo, but then came back for the last album, Tomb of Chaos. And yeah, so then we've got a new bass drummer, a new bassist, and new drummer. But yeah, the when you get um, Relentless Appetite, the opening track is a really good, uh, really good standout track to begin with, and it's it starts off with like a real choppy uh, rhythm to it, like a frantic uh, choppy riff, and then you got that. Awesome riff at the end. You know, and uh, that sticks in. Then you got Cybernetic Harvest, which kind of verges on early Hate Eternal and early Nile vibes. Like we really are getting the old, you know, used to be more of a groove emphasis and more sort of chaotic. We're getting into real sort of blast beaty technical territory now which is uh, another sort of step forward for the band it's got a real classic James Murphy style um, solo on that one and that's what you get all the way through this you get real melodic classic sounding solos in the vein of James Murphy and in the vein of, uh, vein of Trey from Morbid Angel as well um, I don't I, I can never pronounce the surname I know it's Lovecraftian but uh, Forever in Sufferance is another one as well that sort of kicks off nicely but then it sort of picks up tempo halfway through into the main riff so it sort of picks up picks up picks up gets faster and faster and then just boom slows down into this nice thick bass and then it sort of picks into this half time and gradually builds up again and then kicks into like builds into this real fat groove awesome another blazing solo on that one but um yeah so it's basically just the band up in the ante in every way. They have got better with every single album. and um, But then it's the second half of the album for me that really, really shows that this band is going, you know, is they're moving forward in the terms of their songwriting um, to a place where I think they really are going to be setting a new standard. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's, there's no, bands come out that set a new standard, like what they kind of do a new take on a genre. And then another band comes along to so say like when, um, Nile came along, that was a new standard in terms of technicality, in terms of style, uh, in, in terms of a new approach to death metal. So I got sun in my eye. Um, and then Skeletal Remains, like a band like Skeletal Remains comes along where they're not given a new, take or a new a new approach they're just doing they're just raising the standard so it's like right we're doing we've we've we're we're keeping everything in place but in just terms of quality in terms of standard comes along with a classic album and i think this is what skeletal remains have done here so we've got the first five songs oh, oh, it would have been perfect if this fit perfectly on a vinyl but um, yeah, think of the first five songs as the first half of the uh, half of the album, and I don't know if this designed like this, but this is how it feels. Where take uh, and do you know what Chris did mention that Formula's Fatal to Flesh um, is his favourite Morbid Angel album, and it was and it was mine as well. And uh, that sequence of songs at the end of that, where you have the trilogy, you have the uh, thingy, what's it called, of the Gas Giant. 
then it goes into invocation of the continual one and then you have the instrumental art at the end of it well this has a similar sort of thing here. i don't know if it's by design but it's fallen into place so you have this really cool instrumental it's about a minute and a half long called ceremony of impiety real you remember those instrumentals that um those interludes that uh morbid angel would have it would be all you know keyboards and dungeon synth you know as it would be known now it's quite orchestral so it builds up the atmosphere and it sets the tone where well, you get that with uh, ceremony of impiety and then you get the two best songs on the album void of despair which is phenomenal it's just everything the riffs the it's dark and moody it goes all through different paces and then it comes to the masterpiece on the album which is unmerciful which is a seven minute epic and the solo on on unmerciful trey from morbid angel would have been proud to have wrote and i'm not they're not ripping off morbid angel in any way shape or form and even if they were this is better than anything Morbid Angel have put up in over 25 years, so who gives a shit? Um, but yeah, Unmerciful is the is the cherry on the cake. And then the album closes, and I love an instrumental. And uh, the instrumental has died of late, and I'm, I want to see the instrumental come back. And Evocation, The Rebirth, is a five and a half minute instrumental that closes the album. It's dark, it's atmospheric, it's fucking gorgeous and so these last four tracks it's awesome to begin with anyway you got five frantic riffing shredding melodic groovy dark atmospheric fantastic classic death metal as death metal should be on the first five songs and then you get the your minute lot and a half inch instrumental which kind of just slices off it's like right pay attention now now we're going to get into the real good stuff and the band just pushed themselves forward um, with the last three closing tracks. Void of Despair, Unmerciful, which is the peak, and then the sort of epilogue of the instrumental of Evocation and Rebirth. And I'm wondering if I if I really took... I was just sort of listening to the album in the background at the time, and I wish I took more notice when, before I did my interview with Chris. I would have said, is this some sort of concept? Is it, um, you know, not a full concept album, but is this just a little... Is this meant to be together? But then again, he could have pointed it out, couldn't he? But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, the second half of the, of the album is when the band, they really have worked themselves up to a peak and they really have pushed themselves forward. And um, I, I said all along, there's a classic album in this band and I think we may have reached it, but I still think the band have still got places to go. And uh, I think this is going to be as skeletal remains get bigger and they keep getting you know developing as songwriters and as a band as they keep going forward in you know and then when what eventually will happen a hundred years from now when we're all looking back on rock and roll and death metal and all the rest of it i do think skeletal remains is back catalog is going to be highly valued and, and, and highly regarded and with retrospects looked at as a go like yeah this this was a fantastic catalogue of albums and a, and a body of work where and you see a band developing into a classic band so um yeah exciting times oh and this one the uh, digipack edition comes with a normally with uh skeletal remains if you get the special edition of whichever album it comes with a cover version uh, as a bonus track just them again they've they know their stuff skeletal remains they know their classic fan they know what what lineage they're following you had a great disincarnate, um, it's disincarnate, and there's discarnate. I always get the two, you know, James Murphy disincarnate. Uh, you got a cover of that on the last album, but this one you get um, a hate eternal cover. There's something on the back of this it's getting on my nerves. All right, that's cool. Yes, yeah, so you get Messiah of Rage, a uh, hate eternal cover. Now, if you're new to the channel, hate eternal are my one of my favourite death metal bands. I did do a really in depth. Um, series actually of all the works of eric rutan uh go and have a look um through that i do a whole retrospective of hate eternal i've also done alas and uh morbid angel and um interna scene etc etc um one of my yeah so anyway so what's exciting about this is that messiah of rage isn't actually on any of the hate eternal albums it is on their demo this was their original demo 
um, a split with Alas. So two projects by Eric Rutan. This is one of my um, prized possessions. Do not ask me how much I paid for it. I don't care to remember. But yeah, the so you got the split with Alas, and then you got um, so you got four songs from Alas, and then three songs from Hate Eternal. And um, so you got Messiah of Rage, Sacrilege of Hate, Saturated in Dejection. Sacrilege of Hate and Saturated in Dejection was re-recorded for the band's first album. But Messiah of Rage has only ever been on this demo. And uh, the band's, that is the song that this band cover. So again, it goes to show that they know their stuff. And interestingly, as Chris points out in the interview, if you've watched it, um, when getting permission to use the song and sorting out who, you know, writing credits for royalties and all that good stuff, um, Eric Rutan pointed out, no, it was actually Alex Webster that um, wrote that song. So, yeah, that was interesting. Anyway, so that concludes the review. I'm going to give this a good solid 9 out of 10. I don't know if it's going to be album of the year, but I think it's certainly going to be death metal album of the year. It's going to be a bloody good album that that's better than it if um, if one does come along. Mind you, we just had the uh, announcement that the new Nile album has uh, just been finished mixed, so hopefully that'll be out soon. But yeah, Check out Skeletal Remains. Go see them on tour if they come near you. And um, in the description below, check out my interview with Chris Monroy um, if you haven't watched it already. And yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. And I'll see you on the next review. See you soon. Cheers.